This is part 89 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to enforce Fornicate constraint referential integrity on delete no action in Entity Framework Core. Before we do anything, first let's understand what is cascading referential integrity constraint and the different options we have. Cascading referential integrity constraint allows to define the actions Microsoft SQL Server should take when a user attempts to delete or update a key to which an existing foreign key points. Let's understand what this means with an example. Consider this employee table. If I ask you now what is Mary gender, you wouldn't be able to tell because you don't know what this value to means. Now consider this gender table. Gender ID column within the employee table is a foreign key referencing ID column in the gender table. So now if I ask you what is Mary gender, you will take this value 2, look that up in the ID column of the gender table. So 2 means female. So Mary gender is female. Now if I delete this row from the gender table and then if I ask you what is Mary's gender, again you would have no clue because you don't know what this value 2 means. So in the gender table for this row, we have two child rows in the employee table, the first row and the last row because the foreign key value 2 is referencing this key value in the gender table. So when there are child rows in the employee table and if we delete this parent row from the gender table, these two rows, the first row and last row will become orphan records. So cascading referential integrity constraint allows to define the actions a database should take when we attempt to delete or update a key to which existing foreign key values point to. In Microsoft SQL Server, we've got these four options. We discussed cascading referential integrity constraint and what these different options do in detail in part 5 of SQL Server tutorial. So if you're new to these concepts, please check out this video. I'll include the link in the description of this video. Now, in ASP.NET Core, registered users are stored in ASP.NET users table and roles are stored in ASP.NET roles table. User and role mapping data is stored in ASP.NET user roles table. This table has got just two columns, user ID and role ID and both are foreign keys. User ID references the ID column in ASP.NET users table and role ID references the ID column in ASP.NET roles table. Now, Let's say we've got an admin role. So the role ID and role name is stored in ASP.NET roles table. And let's say we have got two users. So their user ID and username is stored in ASP.NET users table. And those two users are in the admin role. So that role membership data is stored in this table, ASP.NET user roles. Now, if we delete the admin role from ASP.NET roles table, what should SQL Server do? Let's look at the default behavior that we have in Entity Framework Core. At the moment, within our application, we've got just two roles, user role and admin role. So if we take a look at ASP.NET roles database table, we've got those two roles here. Look at the name column, user role and admin role. At the moment, only this user with username prajim at prajimtech.com is a member of the admin role. So if we take a look at ASP.NET user roles table, we have just that one row. So this user ID here is the user ID of the user prajim at prajimtech.com and he's a member of the role admin. Now let's edit the user role and we want to add more users to this role. So let's add these two users to the users role. Now, if we take a look at ASP.NET user roles table, we've got three rows. Look at this first two rows here. These two users are now members of this role that end with 477. Now, if we want to know what this role name is, we go back to ASP.NET roles table. So the role ID ends with 477. So it is the user role. Now, if we try to delete this user role from ASP.NET roles table, what should the database do? Remember, this row has got child rows in ASP.NET user roles. Let's look at the default behavior we have in ASP.NET Core. Let's go back to the list roles view and then we want to delete the user role. 
If we now look at the database tables, notice in the ASP.NET roles database table, we only have the admin role. The user role is gone. And if we take a look at ASP.NET user roles table, the role membership data is also gone. So the point that I'm trying to make is by default in Entity Framework Core, if we delete the parent row, the child rows are automatically deleted. So by default, the cascading referential integrity constraint is set to cascade option. We can confirm this by looking at ASP.NET user roles table definition. So within Visual Studio, go to SQL Server Object Explorer, right click on ASP.NET user roles and then select this option, view designer. Notice in the top section, we have the designer surface and in the bottom section here, we have the transact SQL. And if we scroll to the right, notice both these two columns, role ID and user ID are foreign keys referencing ID column from ASP.NET roles and ASP.NET users table. And notice the on delete referential integrity here. This is set to cascade, meaning when the parent row is deleted, delete the respective child rows as well. You can also see the two foreign keys right here. And if I right click on this role ID foreign key and go to its properties, notice again on delete is set to cascade and on update is set to no action. Now, what if we want to customize this default behavior? We don't want the delete operation to be cascaded to the child rows. We don't want to allow a role to be deleted if there are users in that role. If you really want to delete that role, first remove the users from the role and then delete the role. To make this happen, we basically have to set this on delete cascading referential integrity constraint to no action. When we do this, and if we try to delete a parent row for which there are still child rows, an exception will be thrown and the delete operation will be rolled back. For this to happen, we have to modify the code in on model creating method of our application DB context class. Notice this method receives model builder instance as a parameter. From the model builder, we get to model and from there we get all our application entity types and from there we are getting all the foreign keys and we are looping through each foreign key and setting its delete behavior to restrict. When we do this, it basically sets on delete referential integrity constraint to no action. So within our AppDB context class in on model creating method, I'm going to paste the code that we have seen on the slide. At this point, for this change that we just made, we want to add a new migration. So let's go to package manager console to add a new migration. We use add migration command. Let's call our migration test. If we take a look at the migration code that is generated, notice it's basically dropping all the foreign keys and then adding them back again with on delete referential integrity set to restrict. Now we want to apply this migration to our database. And for that, we use update dash database command. There we go. Our migration is successfully applied. If we now take a look at ASP.NET user roles table designer, we still see on delete cascading referential integrity is set to cascade. Let's close the designer and reopen it to see the updated changes. Notice on delete referential integrity is not set to anything explicitly here. If we don't set anything explicitly, the default for a database is no action. So if we look at the properties of this role ID foreign key, notice on delete referential integrity is set to no action. Let's create a new role now. I'm going to call it test role. At the moment, within this test role, we don't have any users. So if I try to delete this role, we should not have any problem. There we go. The role is successfully deleted. Now let's add that role again. This time, let's add users to this role. Let's make these two users members of our new test role. At this point, if we try to delete this role, it should not be allowed because there are child rows referencing this role ID. There we go. We have an exception. The delete statement conflicted with the reference constraint and the delete operation is rolled back. So if we take a look at the data that we have in ASP.NET roles table, notice we still have test role within the database table.
At the moment, we are displaying this exception page which doesn't make much sense to the end user. In our next video, we'll discuss how to display a user-friendly view which basically tells the user you cannot delete this role because there are users in this role. If you really want to delete the role, first remove the users from the role and then try to delete something along those lines. That's it in this video and thank you for listening.